More now on our top story. The Red Cross says 24 hostages have now been freed by Hamas. This is part of a temporary ceasefire now in effect between Israel and Hamas. And for the past seven weeks, Doctors Without Borders says there has been no safe passage to medical aid in Gaza. Earlier this week, the group helped coordinate the evacuation of patients trapped in Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza City. And for more on what we can expect to see now that there is a pause in fighting, we're joined live by Joseph Bellavo, the executive director of Doctors Without Borders. Joseph, thank you for making time for us. This is a historical day. Some Israeli hostages have finally been released, and some Palestinians who have been held in Israeli prisons have also been released. Uh, let's start by getting your reaction to that and maybe talk about uh, your involvement on on the ground. Yeah, first off, that's absolutely wonderful news. Uh, hopefully, we'll see more of the uh, the exchange and, and more release of, uh, of hostages and prisoners. Uh, terrific to hear that. Um, we're also hoping very much that uh, this, this truce, so this uh, so far four day uh, pause in the fighting, uh, will lead to something more sustained. Um, right now, we we have these sort of few days uh, to work with. And uh, let's be realistic about what we can do from a medical humanitarian uh, perspective within, within uh, such a short period of time. Also knowing mm -hmm. <clears throat> that both parties to conflict have, have indicated that they would resume hostilities. <clears throat> and that really puts limits then on what we're able to do from a medical humanitarian perspective. So what we can hope to do in the, in the short term, Lena, is, is, is hopefully evacuate uh, some pe people, there are still several hundreds of, of patients who are in what are now dysfunctional uh, hospitals, uh, severely wounded uh, patients, uh, some children. Uh, so we, hopefully we can get some evacuations from the north down to the south into some better, uh, better medical care. Uh, also, Doctors Without Borders has uh, a number of staff uh, still in the north. These are people who have been under incredible duress, uh, who have been subject to the, to the violence uh, that has been in and around uh, the hospitals in, in the northern part of Gaza over the last couple of weeks. Um, we, we lost a couple of doctor colleagues. I, I, you probably know that three right. days ago uh, in Al Auda Hospital when that hospital was, uh, was struck. Um, so there are a number of other uh, staff members that we would hope to get out during this period of time. And then on the other end, uh, hoping to get, and, and we're hearing, okay, maybe up a couple hundred uh, trucks of uh, humanitarian supplies could come through the Rafa crossing uh, during these days. That would be wonderful. It would also be, uh, frankly, a drop in the bucket compared to what's needed. So any amount, any truck with any amount of, of medical supplies, of food, of water, of fuel will be uh, hugely welcome. Um, but already prior to October 7th, uh, you know, there were several hundreds of, med uh, of aid trucks crossing that border crossing uh, every day. Uh, and so we're going to... You know, and when you look at now the, the level of destruction, especially of the health system in the, in the north, we're going to need, uh, that's why we're hoping for this longer ceasefire so that we can really get in there and carve out a, a space to restart medical activities. Right. This deal, of course, allows badly needed aid to start flowing into guys. I heard you say that this temporary truce will help in the sense that you can evacuate some patients in Gaza. So are all hospitals just completely out of service? And um, at this point, is it just evacuations that you're working on? Unfortunately, in, in the northern part of Gaza, we, we can say that uh, health care has, has basically ground to a halt. To the extent that there's any health care still being uh, delivered, uh, it's just on the basis of individual doctors and nurses and other medics who, who are being there with patients and kind of doing what they can. But the system, uh, because the, the hospitals have just been systematically uh, damaged, uh, the violence has, has come in and around uh, just about every hospital in, in northern Gaza now. And then combined with uh, the, uh, the, siege, the siege warfare uh, in which uh, really crucial supplies uh, have either been siphoned off, so have not been coming through, uh, or like generators have been damaged, uh, oxygen uh, uh, machines have been damaged, and other uh, essential inf infrastructure. So that combined with the lack of now, now we're just out of just about every kind of basic supply, including clean water, uh, gauze, uh, painkillers, the most basic uh, kinds of, of medical uh, supplies that are necessary. So, yes, unfortunately, we're in a situation where uh, the, the health system is dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And to get that going again is going to require a huge amount of supplies. It's going to require 
teams and people. Right now, Doctors Without Borders is not comfortable to bring in large teams, the necessary large teams right now, uh, to, to scale up until we can have more assurance that the ceasefire will be sustained. And I know that's something uh, you are calling for, for a sustained ceasefire. Uh, Joseph Beliveau, the executive director of Doctors Without Borders, I want to thank you for this conversation.